Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the State of Crypto, your one-stop source for all crypto live news and technicals. I'm host Martin, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about crypto try and hold. Now, if you are catching this from live, welcome, and if you're catching the replay and have any suggestions for us, please leave us a comment below. I really want to know what you're thinking. Also, if you want to be up to date with the latest crypto live news and technicals, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button and that bell so you're notified when we go live. And if you want to keep on chatting with us when the stream is done, join us on Discord. There you go links have gone out they're pinned at the top of the chat thank you guys for joining me thank you for being here man who is in the house madison thank you for being here may thank you for being here Hallie, crop dog thank you for being here bitcoin jake thank you very much for being here also i'm gonna take bring uh prepare uh, for war because prepare for war did awesome stuff and i know you're not here in person right now but at least i know you're here with us because you did something really really cool i'm gonna show that in a little bit here on the stream thank you very much guys for all the support that you give to this channel thank you very much for all the support that you give to this channel with your views with your likes you know with uh just being here man in general thank you all awesome thank you all awesome supporters man of this awesome channel let's go to where the magic happens man yes i was looking at ethereum just looking at eth well, let's go here to the dollar man let's, let's have a little market cap andrew what's up all right so market cap what is happening <clears throat> hat hidden divergence remember we talked about that Try to hold, look at that. We went all the way up to this top part and we rejected that zone. The highest point we got was 2.154. This area here, if I select it, I'll say 2.154. I have not changed this. I never moved this stuff. You guys know this. I'm like, how do you know? I don't delete anything until the chart tells me it's overloaded with stuff. So we can always track everything that we talk here on the stream. Um, with that said, I think it's fairly cool that it just went up to that top and rejected. I know we know that's an area of support resistance, We've been within this zone before. We're still holding. We could still go down, right? We're not out of the danger zone. We're in this area where a bounce or a drop are equally possible, right? So it's not the best thing. By the way, guys, it's Saturday. Thank you all for joining me. Cheers. We're going to keep on moving here as we keep on um, looking at crypto, right? So market cap, not a lot happening. Hidden divergence, still in play, still trying to get us to hold. Consolidating sideways, that's what we expect to get. Hopefully we can hold and not drop. Again, retest of the 20 would likely be a, a target. So we'll see if we can get there, right?
Oh, I know, I know. I should have just uh, changed that top, right? Anyways, guys, check this out. Uh, Prepare for War has been inviting me to Vegas for a while. I have not been able to go. I didn't have my laptop. Now I have my laptop. I'm gonna be able to travel now. But the coolest thing here is that he was in Vegas and he brought this with him. I'm not sure if he bought it there or he brought it with him, but I think it's freaking awesome. He was uh, traveling around Vegas and he like wrote the state of crypto, put a rocket set TA and then a YouTube button. That is freaking awesome, guys. Check this out. He also put it in a couple places in Vegas, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, thank you very much for this, man. I really, really appreciate this, you know? Like, look at this. It's awesome. Look, it's like it has two different colors, so it's easier to see. That's so cool, man. And he's here uh, pointing towards the moon because that's where the rock is going to take us. He's in front of New York, New York Hotel. And that is amazing. Here he's inside the casino. I wonder how many people saw this. I wonder actually how many people saw this. That is pretty cool, man. And he sent me this picture here, but... Um, that is freaking awesome, dude. So he tried to get more shots, but the, it was starting to get windy and the, chi the sign got messed up. I, I, that's fine. I don't mind it. Thank you very much for that, dude. It's humbling to see you guys support the channel. That, I think that's that's freaking awesome. It speaks volume. Thank you very much for that that awesome uh, gesture, man. I really, really appreciate it. Now, let's go over and look at Bitcoin. What is happening with the corn? Bitcoin dominance at 40.83. He lost dominance yesterday. He's trying to regain it today. When was the last time that we were here? Look at this. Last time we were here, everyone got massacred, right? All the alts, the horrible. Now, are we at that point again where we're going to try to rally from here and then everything's going to drop, right? September. We do know September's tend to be red. We're already having a red September. So, man, it's a tough one right now, right? Because if we do start to recover, we could be looking for action to the upside, right? Madison says she made her first NFT. That's awesome, Madison. That's really cool. <clears throat> Look at this, right? So if I put this line there, we've hit this zone here. We're kind of close to that zone, and we're very close to that zone, right? So again, last time Bitcoin's been at this area and recovered, markets have crashed, right? <clears throat> so are we going to start seeing recovery here for Bitcoin? I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we don't. Uh, just to be fair though, right? But we're gonna start building bullish divergence here. Look, we're gonna get start to go lower than here at some point in time. Start to go lower. We're gonna be going from low to high here on the RSI. Gotta be creating some bullish divergence. That is inevitably gonna get us to rally at some point in time. This bull run has to come back down. <clears throat> and then we're gonna have to try to rally up again. Now, am I super bullish right now? Now we're red. <clears throat> now we're red. The corn looks bearish. We are consolidating down sloping. That usually tends to bring action to the upside. But I don't like the way the market feels, right? We talked about this. I even drew some um, some reference here saying, you look at this, right? So we have this and now we're dropping. So we have this, right? We, we could get a pump, right? We could get a pump like we did here, create some more divergence and then drop. And then we're doing fractals. Right? If that happens, we're doing fractals. So yes, we could still get a rally. I'm not gonna be really banking a lot of that rally right now, <clears throat> but it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. Now, another thing um, that we could look at, I'll, like I have something else to show here on, on the Bitcoin. Um, what was it, dude? I was gonna show something else in Bitcoin that could lead to to more action to downside, particularly, but uh, I can't remember what it was what it was that I wanted to show. I'll probably gonna remember it in a little bit. You feel like you're uh, buying the news, yeah. You're less than 24 hours uh, from Cardano's. Yeah, that's interesting. We can check out Cardano in a little bit. It is not, it is not on the list. So we can put Cardano here. Ah, uh, the list is coming out from yesterday, so it didn't save the new one. So ignore all those coins. They're not requested. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yes, we could try to go for a rally, right? We do have, or we don't have here hidden divergence. I wish we had hidden divergence. It'd be nice. Uh, but we could go for that small move up, create that move, and then drop. It's not going to be the best thing for Bitcoin, but we could be doing a fractal. And um, ultimately, that could lead us back uh, down on the price of Bitcoin, right? But there's something else I wanted to show on Bitcoin. I can't remember what it was, though. So. Um, there's something else that's pointing to bearish, but um, I think I'm going to leave it for there uh, right now. If I remember, we can talk about it, if not tomorrow. Anyways, look at Bitcoin. Rejecting 45,467. We do know we want to be above this area. Remember what I told you guys? Being below this area 
very likely we'll go to that 40k zone. I'm not really looking forward to that. I'm not really looking forward to that. Coming lower, more negative momentum, lower still, neutral at 43.83. Don't have anything bullish on the daily though, right? I mean, then that kind of sucks. That's why I want us to get a rally. Why do I want us to get a rally? We do get a rally and then drop a little bit I'm back to the zone. There's a chance we might create some bullish divergence strong. And then we could look for action to the upside. That's going to be awesome, right? That's what that's what we ultimately want to see. And now I remember what I wanted to show. Um, where did I place it? Though? I think it's here. Here? Yeah, it's here. All right. So this is a corn, right? So this Bitcoin, again, if you remember this chart, I have not changed anything here. We're still in this chart. And I'm going to go here on the daily. And what I'm going to show you here, this is volume. There is an area of support, right? I, I usually don't bring this volume up <clears throat> a lot. But if we look at volume, where we're at right now, it, it is a huge gap. So dropping below the zone, that's why I'm saying it's critical. And you remember when I said 40K? Not because I had seen this, but because even on this chart, even on this chart, the next level, the next strong level is down here at 40K. It's, for me, it's easy to tell. Uh, because we do know that these ones are kind of minor. We did struggle to get above them, but they're kind of minor supports. Now, when we come and look here, and I said that yesterday, right? Without even looking at this, I said that yesterday. I brought this up today. I was I went to look at the volume, see where we're gonna get support. Where's this area support? Where does it start? 40K, right? Look, 40K. Where does it go to? The biggest area support is gonna be around 34K. We, I don't think we go back down that low. It would not be necessarily good. I do think we do get a rally, and that rally could come up to the zone again. We have a lot of resistance here with volume, right? Look at that. So where are we gonna go? Well, if we do try to go up again, that 200 moving average here, it is gonna look like there's a lot of resistance. So 45,907 would be a good target. We kind of wicked it today. Look at this. Let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. Let's make this larger. Look at this wick. Where did that that wick go? Right, 45,000. What did we have here? the biggest week of resistance on this here area. Now, the next one is up here at 49,000. Do we go up there? Man, it's good. It's, there's a lot of volume in the zone. There's a lot of orders on this area. So, man, I'm thinking I'm thinking we, we could try to go back for this zone again. Maybe close here. We need to close above for us to try to get move up to this area, the 46. And if you kind of see this and match it with where I have my resistances, look at this. 45, 46, 800, 49, right? So, um... Again, this this I hadn't brought up, I think ever. I, I rarely looked for the volume, but look at this. 45, 46, and then the next big one, 49. So it kind of matches. I showed more often, thanks man. Um, I It kind of matches to where I have my supports and resistances. Not because I, I am a wizard, right? But I do know that in those areas, we have tend to turn around and come back down. We've done sharp moves. And that is what we're looking at this chart like that. Look, the next area, it's up here. Well, up here, we didn't have anything. Bitcoin could have still, well, we should have seen the profile by, by this time, but we could have still come up all the way up here, hit resistance and then move back down. There is some volume, but it's not the strongest. We're looking for the spikes. Now we have a spike here and here. So we're in an area where there was support. We just plowed through it, fortunately. So now we're gonna have resistance on the way back up. But again, yeah, we, it matches It matches where we have our supports and resistances. That's how I know which ones are minor, right? Um, not because I've seen this chart, but again, just from looking at how Bitcoin has behaved and, and the fact that we've just been doing this for a long time and we're always looking at the same chart and we have been doing this at least uh, on YouTube for over two years. We do know where those areas for support and resistances are. Now, Bitcoin has not been trading at these levels for a long time, but ever since this year started, it's been trading at these levels. We drew those support lines and those resistance lines and we knew where they're going to be. Why? Because we were like, we weren't even looking at this chart. If you've been with us, we haven't looked at this chart with the volume. Now, the fact that our supports and resistance matches with the volume, it just basically lets us know that our supports and resistance are somewhat validated. So again, if we do go down next area, support's probably going to be down here on the 40s. It's, that's where it's going to begin, because from here, it, it could plow through this really easy, right? It's not a lot of volume here. So again, to the upside, we're going to have resistance, which we just rejected. Again, we do need to get above that zone, and we're kind of holding support here. If you look at that, if I zoom in here and you look at this spike here and I put a line, look at that, right? That line I just covered here, that is what's giving us some kind of support. Now, besides that line, we are also finding support here 
For right now, we're gonna find resistance, but this is a 20 moving average. It's starting to pop back up a bit. Not really gonna keep track of the moving averages for this stream, but what I'm gonna talk about is, you remember when we drew this? Remember when I said Bitcoin could go like this? We're kind of following this close by. Now, this line I did draw dropping all the way down to zero. Now, I don't think Bitcoin's gonna go down to zero. I don't think this line's gonna be accurate at all past a certain point. Now, what I'm looking for, though, or what I was looking at here, if you guys remember that, I was looking at how Bitcoin had behaved on the previous, um, on, on the previous uh, uh, death crosses, right? So death cross, pump, and then drop, right? Look. Death cross, pump, and then drop, right? So that's, that's looking at this past experience and seeing what Bitcoin had done. I am ignoring this death cross because the death cross came from this massive drop. This massive drop on March the 12th is what caused that death drop. But when we look at when we didn't have that massive drop and we didn't have, you know, Rona and other stuff coming around, the, the usual behavior of Bitcoin was a pump and a drop. This was around when, you know, when Rona started to hit a little bit strong and we were talking about recession and, and you know, maybe stalling the economy, etc. So yeah, we did tend to see that drop. But again, it, even before then, the normal thing to do was, okay, that cross pump drop All right we haven't had a death cross before then and then here that cross pump drop right so and right now what we're seeing is death cross pump and we're starting to get that drop again interesting stuff happening on bitcoin again not super confident it's not looking super strong it's also not looking super bearish so again it's in an era of indecision we know we're consolidating we're down something consolidating that's good for us we do know we do tend to get action to the upside with that and uh, hopefully we can break up uh, to the upside but if we do move to the upside Again, my concern is gonna be here, right? It's gonna be here looking at this chart and saying, yo, are we gonna are we gonna repeat history, right? Sorry about that. Uh, are we gonna repeat history? Are we making a fractal of this? To here, it's the same thing, all right? So like an impulse, a pullback, and then three more. An impulse, a pullback, and then three more. One, two, three, right? So the count here, it's the same. Is it a Wyckoff? Is it a micro Wyckoff? It could be argued that it's looking a little bit like when we had Wyckoff here, right? To some extent. So yeah, is Wyckoff repeating itself on a, on a fractal? It could. I mean, this downslope consolidation, like I said, could lead for action to the upside. It's probably not going to get as high and then drop. So what that's going to happen here is going to be probably gonna be coming lower. We might be looking for a higher area here or even here, right? We're going to be going higher, create some, some kind of bearish divergence, hidden, like we created here, right? Hidden bearish divergence, look high to low low to high right so we created that hidden bearish divergence here and and then we took that drop like low to high right so in this in this zone here so let me get rid of this and uh show it here right so i'm assuming back here when we had that happen so you can see what i'm talking about so look at this here right high to low and then here low and we went slightly higher we created that hidden divergence and with that we got that drop so again, Bitcoin could still go for a small rally and then we could be looking for a slight drop. Now, I'm gonna leave that drawing here. Is the 1618 here a valid target? I'm not gonna call it a valid target. It, it is from this fifth here from high to low, so it was good. We have moved up, but if we are to readjust our fifths right now, which we could, right, and we should. So we're getting new data. Mike, what's up, man? Thank you very much for being here. If we are to readjust our, our, our fifths, or looking at from a low point to a high point, we are making a valid retrace. We got to that 382 and we're trying to hold on. So we're between that 236, which matches up with our 1618, meaning we're gonna hit some resistance there. And that's what I'm saying. We might go there, bounce, and then reject. We're gonna have double resistance. And what do we know about this zone, right? What do we know about this area around 47, 45,000, uh, 47, 49,000? Look at this, right? Volume profile. Look at the, how the volume is behaving. So if we do come up to the zone, 47, right? 48, so whatever, we can go here and then get that drop, right? So again, I'm looking at the same zone, 48, 49, even 49 would be a good hit. There's a lot of, of resistance there and move back down. We also know that it will match with our resistance that we have on our chart um, here, right? So again, Bitcoin could go for a small recovery. Just watch out, there's gonna be resistance. There's resistance here, 49,000. Could hit there and reject. Again, we might be creating bearish divergence by the time we get there, at least hidden divergence. And like I said, uh, this chart, I hadn't, I hadn't really been looking at this volume for uh, crypto on charts. So we do know there's gonna be support to the downside, right? We do know there's gonna be support here, 
around the 40,000, which again, matches out with our 40,000 line right around here, right? So 40,000, we do have a line there. We know there's gonna be some support. So 40,000 is gonna have support. Again, bounce, we could bounce here, try to get to this upper area and then reject. Now, what I'm still looking though, and like I said, history, what we have seen is every time we got in a death cross, um, we do get, um, we do tend to get this rally and then drop, right? So death cross here, right? Rally drop. Again, sorry if it's repetitive, but there's some of you that are tuning in. And then a death cross here, look at the dead cross here, rally and drop. Now, um, what we're seeing here could be a fractal of this bigger move, just like I shown in the chart, right? So again, be careful. We might go for a rally, could be a sucker's rally, right? If, if it starts to rally a little bit, I would kind of be looking for it to sell, at least offload some position in case it does go for that second drop on, on still uh, September. Um, and then buy back in on uh, starting October or mid October or so. Uh, when we do know the market tends to look for recovery for the last quarter of the year so that being said that is bitcoin on the daily let's move on to the shorter times because i know i spent a lot of time here on bitcoin daily today but it's important that we said this the market is very shaky we had a major impulse down it's consolidating it's down sloping it's looking okay right now it looks as though we're gonna try to flatten out a bit but uh, after an impulse down the market's scared, right? We just had a major move. So what we're looking for right now is consolidation. Once we consolidate, we're gonna get our next move. Is it gonna be a layup or a lay down? No one knows right now because the market is shaky. If, think about it, a lot of people that got in at the stop just took a 11% drop and are probably looking towards a 20% drop till right now so we can even measure it. So from here to here, we're looking around that 14%. So it's not that big, but a lot of people are scared, particularly the new people. They feel burned. They're probably taking out their money scared and they're not going to get back in until this flattens out. They forget about the experience and then we can start looking for upside. Kid drop again. Yes, we do know that we can get that small high and then drop again. We do know that drops tend to come in three legs. We have not gotten those three legs yet forming. So we'll see how this is going to be handled. Bitcoin again, again, a rally and a drop would not necessarily be a bad thing. We, we've talked about this. We said we we're just going up. We're not getting proper consolidation. Right? We never stopped for a good period of time to consolidate sideways and then move back up again. So we, we knew we were due for a pullback for our chart. Bollinger Bands are tied. <clears throat> Tony, what's up? All right, so we have tied on the Bollinger Bands. We have tightness, that's fine. I'm gonna make this larger because uh, the Bollinger Bands are expanding it, right? Tightness on the Bollinger Bands, we did have this divergence here we we're looking for yesterday or when we were live. Again, I had this one when we were live, so we fixed it. And now we're going up. Now we're rejecting 45,000. We're rejecting the 20 million average. Is that good? No, this candle up to here, we're good. It was a spinning top. So we were not confirming with strength that we wanted to be above this line. We do have our breakout candle, which is good. Next candle confirms, but being a spinning top, what do we know spinning tops? They show indecision. What indecision means? It means that we could go up or we could go down. We hit that 20 and we're rejected hard. That means we're not ready yet to move higher. <clears throat> now, what I was hoping we're going to get happening right now it's uh, another kind of drop, at least to here, even to where that wick was, would have been good. We would have been going from a high point to a lower point, and then a negative, less negative, and a low to high. With that, bullish divergence strong and potential for action. The upside to maybe try to break that 45,467 with strength. Now we are sitting sold at 38.29. What do we know about being sold and oversold? We do want to go back to that neutral zone. So you're moving up again, like I said, would not necessarily be bad, right? How bullish is it going to be? I'm not sure right now, right? No one can tell you. If someone comes and tells you they know for sure where the market's going to move, they're probably lying to you. They might be right. They might be wrong. They're going to be 50-50, right? It could go up. It could go down. We do tend to look at technicals to determine where the market might move based on past experiences. So we do tend to have a percentage of probability of a move to happen. Now, depending on what indicator you're looking at is what percentage of probability you're playing with. That's what we tend to look for coinciding data, right? For confluence, two or three indicators that are saying the same thing, or at least two indicators that are saying the same thing, or at least divergence in not only the daily, but the four hour and the one hour when we have bullish divergence in all three, we do know that we should be looking for action upside. Having strong bullish divergence when we're oversold, it's also a good indicator that the market is looking for a move to the upside. Now, we were talking about this yesterday and we talked about this move, that's what we drew the line. We also had an Ethereum. What do I say about that line? If we do break that line, we're gonna go short-term bullish. Where have we gone? Short-term bullish. Now there's two ways to draw the line. This way I drew it, that's the way I would draw it because that's where we wanted to break. And look at this, once we break it, we did go. We did try to go for the higher high, right? 
The other way to draw it is going to be from here and it's going to be going like this. Now, if we drew, if we draw this line like this, I'm not liking it because we didn't come and back test it enough. So we just hit it once, twice, and then we just drifted away from it, right? We didn't go back to it. So that is not the way I would draw it. A lot of people are probably going to draw it that way because that's the highest point and that's fine. You should want to take your first and second touch points and then just draw your line. That's okay. And it's not a big deal. Now what I'm drawing that line for is this. If we zoom out enough, this, it looks a little bit like a falling channel or a falling wedge that we tried to break out of and came back in. So again, fake breakout. But I would not be going with this because I don't like the way it feels. It's not tight enough. It, it could be a down sloping channel. If we adjust, particularly to include this new point, right, it, it will look something like this. So again, you gotta figure out what you're looking at. It's important that you determine what you're looking at right now before you keep going, right? So if, if we go here like this and we just extend that line to go there, and we're still using that touch point and that touch point, look at this. Hit here in the low and hit here in the low. So again, <clears throat> we are more in a down sloping channel than a falling wedge. Yes, initial data, right? That's why I said yesterday, it's important that you look at your data and you revise your analysis. As we get new data flowing, it's okay for us to change our point of view. Because as new data develops, we're getting what the market is feeling right now. So right now, it feels as though we're in a downsloping channel. What do we know about downsloping channels and downsloping consolidation? It tends to break the upside. Now, some people might say, yo, that is too micro of a view. And now say, that's fine. It's still a downsloping channel. Okay, cool. So that's too micro of a view. Let's zoom back out a little bit. Let's get something else going here. All right, what are you looking for? Uh, are you want to look for a fallen wedge? All right, we can we can find a fallen wedge. I haven't drawn the fallen wedge on the daily, right? But look at that, we are winning the fallen wedge. What'd you know? Right. So again, it's still down sloping consolidation. I really don't care if it's a fallen wedge or a falling channel. We don't know that falling uh, consolidation or consolidation doubt is down sloping. Does tend to bring action to the upside. So for me right now, it is irrelevant if it's a fallen wedge or a channel. If it's a channel again, I'm anchoring from here to here. It would give me a shorter move to the upside. If I'm anchoring from the wedge, Again, from the channel, the move would be from here to here upon breaking, right? So uh, we will be considering, uh, what was that our touch point that we're considering? Was it this one here? It was this one here. So again, we'll be looking at this break. And if we're going for the wedge, then your break just becomes a little bit larger, right? It is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Again, it, it just, it's just, it's some preference. It's what you feel or what you're thinking the market might do based on your past experience. So yeah, we could be looking for a little bit of a movement up again. 48,000, there's that area again, right? We do know we have resistance at 49. We do know we can come to 48. How do we know we can go up to 48? We do have this line here. Was it on this chart or on the other chart that we have the divergences uh, that were confluence? Uh, I think it was here on the daily, right? No, it wasn't here. That was probably on this one. Um, yeah, it was here, right? So we had confluence here at 47,000, right? So around that 47, 48,000 zone. So again, we do know 47, 48, 49 might be areas of resistance. It's gonna be really dependent on the chart. One, we have volume. Here we have two of fives that are right there. And then on the other charts, we do know that it's at least a target move on a measure move for Bitcoin. So again, we do know that maybe to get above 40, the 40,000s into the, the 50s, we're gonna struggle a bit, right? So again, just keep that in mind. You can go with what you want. Again, taste and preference is not gonna affect. With one of them, you're playing it shorter. With the other one, you're playing it a little bit larger. Again, this one's at 47,500. This one's at 48. So this one kind of matches with our target on the fives. This one matches with our target uh, on the volume, right? And the volume profile. So it's all good. Again, it's what you believe the market might do based on your experience. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna leave this here. The thing is my chart's starting to get cluttered and I don't have a lot of charts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this one and I'm I'm just gonna try to do that same thing. Right? So uh, this one's not looking as good though. So we'll go with this one, I guess. Yeah, this one's looking a little bit better for this drawing. So I'm gonna leave this like here and then I'm gonna be able to remove from the other one and not be like, oh, what was that thing that we drew, right? So again, down the consolidation, dust to break the upside. I'm gonna up uh, re position here. Right, so again, one, two, three, four, right? Respect it off that midline. That's why how, that's why I'm going a little bit more for a downsloping channel as well, right? We are respecting that midline a lot more. What do I mean by that? I'll show you in a second. Again, not pinpointing it to full accuracy. I just want to get a close indication as to where this is going to go. If I wanted to pinpoint it, I'll probably be drawing this down a bit. And I'll probably be shifting this line here up a bit like that. And then with that tightness, look at that. Almost perfect hit points. So what do I mean by respecting that midline, right? Look at this. We were in this channel. How do we know? We came up here, rejected that midline, got above it, came back, found support there. Not once, twice. 
three times, broke it. Again, kind of flirted with it, but now it became a resistance here. Got above it, and now it's kind of becoming a resistance here. So again, down sloping channel makes a little bit more sense than a fallen wedge, although both patterns are, are very, very valid, right? So again, case and preference, you can choose what you want. They're both probably gonna play to the upside if Bitcoin does decide to cooperate, but we're not creating anything bullish. So if we do look at those wedges and everything else, we could still, in theory, come back down to this area before we do try to go for a break up, right? So not really bad if we do come to that zone. Again, I'm just gonna extend this line, see where it goes. And what I'm trying to do right now, it's trying to keep it to where we had it. Midpoint here, midpoint here, and midpoint here. So again, on the first touch here, we're only getting one, two, right? Here we get one, two, three, and then we broke. We did try to go bullish, but again, that resistance line that we have is blowing us down. So if we look at this again, where can we go? We can still come down here. We can still come all the way down here. On our wedge, on our, on our uh, line, we'll probably still come down here to the 44,000s. Uh, even probably 43,000 to find support and then try to bounce. But I'm not really worried about the market right now. I'm just a little bit worried about Bitcoin uh, if it goes for that next leg down and it doesn't respect the falling wedge or the falling channel that is within. That would be bearish. That would be a bearish indicator or bull flag or bull consolidation is not playing, right? All right, cool. So that's Bitcoin. Went in depth a lot more than I usually go in depth on the stuff on the channel. Um which I probably should do more. It just takes a lot of time. Look at this. We just gone over past uh, about 30 minutes or so just talking about Bitcoin. Um, not that I have anything against that, but you know, we usually have a lot of requests to go through and there are not a lot of requests right now. We only have like four points, which is fine. That's why I'm taking a little bit more time to go more in depth onto Bitcoin because there's really not a lot of stuff there. Kevin, thank you very much for being here, man. Much appreciated. Uh, again, so I've shown you what Bitcoin could go on a move up. now. Where could Bitcoin go on a move down, right? Where could Bitcoin go on a move down? Because it's a very valid question. We haven't talked where Bitcoin could target. We do know 40,000s. I talked about 40,000s. We even checked it with volume and say, yo, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is going to probably find resistance at this level. Look at this. This is 35,000. This is 40,000. This is where, where that volume begins. So if we zoom back in here on the daily, again, Bitcoin could go up, come back down to the zone on rejection, and it will be basically going for the pattern that matches this, right? So this became this in miniature. So again, a fractal. Are we gonna get that same drop? No, why are we not gonna get that same drop? Because we're not gonna come all the way down here, man. And on this move, I will be targeting probably somewhere around here, right? Look, sorry. I'll probably be targeting somewhere around this zone. So at 30, 40 might be a good support and then try to bounce back up. I would have to see how much we have reduced that fractal. How are we gonna figure that out? We're gonna go from the low point to the high point. That was a 472% move. So if this fractal is to be the same thing, we're looking at this and this is a 77% move. So we just basically gonna say, okay, so from 400, it went to 77%. What percentage did it reduce? And then what we would do is basically go, okay, so if it reduced by X amount of percents or X amount of times, uh, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that calculation right now. But if it reduced by X amount of times, then this move here, it's, uh, you know, a 50% drop, so if it went, let's say, 7 to how many, uh, it was 70%, uh, how, mu how much was this real? I'm going to do this, dude, screw it. So 517, right? So that's uh, 51. I'm just going to round it off. 517, and then we did go up around 70% here on this other move. And that is 76. And then what we're looking at here is this drop, right? So this drop here, I'll be 49%. And then uh, what we could also calculate here is on this pump, right? That's 20%. So it's a 20% right on here on the micro pump. And we'd also look at this move here and say, um, sorry, I didn't want to anchor it there. Um, Twenty-two percent, right? All right. So what I would do for this is just uh, open up a quick Excel sheet, I guess. Uh, just give me one quick second while I open something here. I'll show you how we're gonna calculate this. It's gonna be super fast. Right, so I'm just gonna put in the data real quick and uh, we're gonna be so 
We're looking at uh, 517 pump and then it's a 76% drop and then it was a 49% rally uh, after that, or sorry, uh, uh, so we had that pump, that pump, and then that drop. So it was a 49% drop. And then we do have around a 20% uh, here and then a 22%, right? So, all right. So what we're going to do here is just very simple. We're just going to do a, a rule of three. So we're going to go uh, this times this divide it by that. So we're looking around a, a 7.20, right? So again, this is um, a rally. We're looking around a 7.20%. To, to match uh, that. So look, if we go from here to here, ha, huh, 6.96. So again, we have one more data point that would say that if we already followed this, we should be looking for at least a, <laughs> have the same area. So yes, where I put that line just by eyesight, <laughs> it's a pretty good point. How do you do that? Okay, so, uh, all right, remember, I just hit everything, I know. That was a bad move on my part. Sorry, guys. I got to bring everything back up here because um, I just lost sight of everything that you should look at. So give me one quick brief second here as I bring everything back up to speed. Um, that is going to go there. That has to be open up there. That chat um, has to go up there. And then uh, that has to be open. 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 All right, cool. So here we go. So, all right. How do you do that, right? So, okay, first, calculate from low to the high point, right? Boom. Again, you, get, you just want to get an approximation. That's 517%. All right, cool. How much did we drop? It was a 76%. Um, was it, it was a 49% drop, right? So 49% again. We're going to go from the high point here to the low point here again. 52, 49. We pinpointed it the first time. We didn't pinpoint it that second time, right? So, look, we're going to go here. It's close enough. Bottom here, 53. We can even change that to 53 and say, yo, all right, so uh, that's a 53% drop. All right, that's cool. So we're still looking at 7.79%, uh, right? How do we know that? Because this rally here, we're matching it and we say, okay, so we're going with that fractal move and we're looking for an average. Again, remember, this is an average. It's not, it's not a, I'm not rocket science doing this, but I'm just looking at this and say, okay, so from here to here, again, 78.2. I do have it at 76. Again, it's just going to measure, you just got to measure it and go with that. So we're looking around 88 8% rally, right? 7.99 on this move that we just did right now. So if we go from here to here, no, sorry, not from there. Um, from here on the drop here, right? Let me get rid of that. Uh, so if we go from here, 8%, look at that. Where, where are we hitting, dude? 9, 8, 7.9, somewhere around here. 48, 49, if I go to 8%, 48, 6. So again, we are looking to hit on that zone again, right? So. Once more, um, chances that we might go to that zone, find some resistance once we meet that and go back down. It would basically, if we do this move here, we would be going for this fractal. Now, how much are we gonna drop afterwards, right? So from this rally to that low, right? Again, just do the same exercise. You go from here to here and say, all right, we dropped around 49% from the high point. So we go 49% here uh, on the drop. So we go, all right. So I'm gonna have to probably recalculate this uh, in a bit, but um, I, I would be confident that we're looking for a target somewhere on this zone, right? On this drop that it's 49%, uh, we should be looking somewhere out here. So like I said, I already show you how to calculate the first part. You can do it for the second part. Um, that is if we are to go with uh, and assume that everything's gonna move the same way. Right, so that's how we do that. Anyways, let's keep rolling. Um, yeah, we can uh, look at it in a second, man. Let me go to Ethereum. I already put it on the list, so we're gonna check it in a second. So let's go to Ethereum. We spent a lot of time on Bitcoin now, around 40 minutes, which is not bad. Ethereum, 3,283 for our chart. All right, bearish divergence action downside, hidden bullish, trying to go for a rally, still holding support at that 382. Don't have anything else happening here. Neutral at 47.28, so we can still be looking for some kind of recovery, particularly if Bitcoin plays ball. Right now, Ethereum, like I said, 3,283. I did hate how it played yesterday because it rejected 3,224. I was really ho hoping for a break and go for that 20. But like I said, still kind of like down slope consolidation here. We can see that following wedge a little bit more clear. And at least in the four hours, not looking like a... Um, it's not looking... Um, I'm gonna go with that. Um, on the four hour, it, uh, let me get my trend on here. 
Um, it's not looking like a channel, like a down sloping channel. Stuff happening here again. Looking for a potential break to the upside. Hopefully we just go bullish, right? Hopefully in that break, we ignore that nonsense that we're doing a fractal and we just go full on bullish and we just don't go back down. That'll be freaking awesome, right? Let's go here, right? So again, same line. We broke it. What happened? Remember we we're here live? We we're breaking it, we we're rejecting it, and then at 10 p.m. we started come back in. Well, I told you guys fake breakout. Look, we broke back out again. And after that, so we back tested it, right? Not once, twice, and then boom, look at that. Upside, right? Very nice move. Short term bullish. Coming back down because Bitcoin didn't want to play ball. But we're hitting that 20 right now. We're hitting that 20 moving average. Ethereum's trying to take off. Be why is Ethereum trying to move? Ethereum's going up 0.66%. Bitcoin is going up 0.16%. Why is Ethereum moving, right? Well, one, Bitcoin is moving. But I think the fact that we're seeing Ethereum move more is because Bitcoin is kind of consolidating. It's, it's starting to move sideways a bit. So Ethereum wants to gain some ground. It did lose quite a bit yesterday. Sorry, it didn't gain as much yesterday. Um, it didn't lose. It just pulled back. I didn't like the pullback that Ethereum got here on the daily. Look at that. Um, it's about uh, the body and, and a little bit more of the candle. So that's a bearish rejection. Usually don't like to see that we had it here also, but here is a little bit less because the body's larger. But look at that, it came back down. So it tells us we're not ready. Hopefully we do want to go back up and be bullish enough to say, screw that. I want to do a reversal and try to look for higher areas of value. That'll be awesome. Again, above that 20 right now. Do we have anything bullish here? No. Low to high, negative momentum, less negative momentum, and low to high. There was really nothing bearish for this breakdown, right? Look, high to low, positive, less positive. Same thing on Bitcoin. I didn't call it. There was nothing bearish for this move down. This is just a rejection of a resistance on Ethereum. And it's a rejection of a resistance. Um, let me load this. It's a rejection of a uh, area of resistance uh, on Bitcoin, right? So again, boom. Again, there was nothing bearish here. We could, you could, if you wanted to say there was some hidden bearish on this small island here that has this break and that'll be fine. Uh, but I do believe it's, this is, this could be an anomaly here. This is short break. So I would not really be considering this one here for the analysis. Um, but you could say that there's bearish divergence and that's why we struggled, right? That's why we struggled. And it would be a valid argument. For me, it'd be like more, oh yeah, we glitched a little bit, but you know, we're, we're getting some movement down, we're getting some rejection, the market's not 100% and we're still consolidating, which it's fine. We're still in the wedge, we're still within the channel. We did go up to that same area, hit resistance. So it would seem again, as of right now, that we're within the channel. Anyways, back to Binance now. 403, man. Look at this. Binance on the daily. Bearish, drop, hidden bullish, holding sideways. Nothing else happening. Neutral at 40.62, but almost hitting that sold area. Four hour chart. Look, bearish. Boom, drop. Hitting the 20. Rejection. Do we have anything bullish? No. Low to high, negative, less negative, low to high. Again, we're consolidating, but here we're not consolidating into a fallen wedge or anything like that. We're consolidating into what seems to be a uh, sort of symmetrical triangle that we should be breaking out of soon enough, right? If we go with this chart and, and this analysis, we should be getting a break, sort of now. So again, I would not be putting a lot of weight here on Binance, at least not on that fallen wedge, or sorry, not that triangle. And now I'll be waiting more to see what the other projects are gonna do. Binance is probably waiting for Bitcoin to do something or Ethereum to do something before it actually does its thing. Now, if Ethereum, like I said, if Bitcoin stagnates, Binance could still be looking for action to the upside, right? Right, it could be, right? It could be. It has bullish news. Remember, there is a whole thing about buy, uh, what is it? Buy the rumor, sell the news. Again, bullish divergence here. We had it yesterday. Went for that rally. We didn't create anything bearish. Look, everything here is high. High to low. Positive, less positive. High to low, right? Price high to low. Nothing bearish. There's really no reason for this move down here. Maybe on the half hour, there is some divergence here. And like I said, when in doubt, just go to the short time scale. Half hour might show some bearish divergence here, right? Look, we can see it. Um, no, it's not even there. What is this number? 120, 114. All right, so low to high, high to low, bearish divergence strong. Get that down again. We got the definition that we needed to on the one hour. How do you know there's divergence? Uh, you kind of see that there's this sort of struggle here, and afterwards the price kind of tends to go down. Um, so you can assume there is something here that's putting pressure on the price, and you cannot see it because there's nothing here. There's nothing on the four hours, so it must be something in the shorter time scale that's saying, yo, there, there is probably something here, you just, you just cannot see it. Let's drop down a level and see what's happening. Anyways, that is it for Binance. Let's go to ADA. 
Beta at $2.58. Look at this, dude. It pumped yesterday magically 10%. Hit that 20, reject that again. Got into this area and rejection. Oh, I didn't want to draw that line. That line is horrible. It's horrid. There you go. Look at that, right? We're rejecting, breaking back into that zone. That sucks, though, because we whipped it again and we're rejecting. Again, I'm not, like, this zone is not 100%. I can't remember what, how I even drew it, but I just, I remember I drew this and I said, this is what we're looking for, consolidation. Now, we do know <laughs> that we're breaking back below that area and we're rejecting. We're rejecting 20, we're rejecting that zone. Now, are we going to go bullish tomorrow when the contracts are live? Not sure, man. I'm not sure. Is it gonna dump on the news? It could, right? I would tell you if you're worried about that set up a stop loss. We have we're taking two dollars and fifty-one cents right now. Two dollars and fifty-seven cents. There's nothing bearish. The last thing we have is hidden bullish. What do we expect to see with hidden bullish? A retest of the twenty. We got it. We rejected. Can we go for another retest? Yeah. Could we go back down? Yeah. Could we start consolidating here? Yeah. There are three very valid possibilities right now. And why am I calling for all three? Because the market's so freaking scared that we don't know what we're going to do. Now, we could consolidate here sideways. The news, could you drop on the news? Yeah, probably. Are people going to be buying it tomorrow? Maybe some people are going to be buying it. Like, I don't know, because it's not going to pump on technicals. It's pumping on, on fundamentals, right? And unfortunately, fundamentals don't play the same in crypto. Because crypto, it is not a regulated area, and a lot of people do leak out information, right? So there's a lot of insider trading. There's a lot of people that already filled their bags. There's a lot of people that have been riding the pump. Probably the news of them going live have been, you know, people have known about them since way before anyone in this community knew about it. Because that was probably just disclosed to someone else inside and they took advantage of that and they bought and then they told their friends to buy because this was gonna happen. And they told their friends and then someone heard and now we know about it, right? So there's a lot of leakage of information in crypto. It is not like on stocks that where if you do get insider information, you could go to jail for insider trading. Here in this industry right now, that is not regulated. So there's a lot of leakage. There's a lot of people with loose lips. So, and what do we know about loose lips? They sink chips. So, you know, we do tend to get those rallies, but afterwards, once the news hit, we do tend to get the drops. Again, I would just say be careful, right? Again, I don't know what's gonna happen. It is not gonna pump on technicals. What we do know though, is that on crypto at least we pumped the rumors and then we sell on the news right? once it's official you we do tend to send we do tend to see action downside is that gonna happen here data i don't know man it's a possibility at least that's what we usually see happen on crypto is that what i'm expecting to happen here in ada no uh i really wish and i really hope that ada recovers with the rest of crypto uh are we gonna get some minor move to the downside we could is it gonna go the way uh you know uh solana did it might Andrew says, Ada has pulled back on every news events 20, 25% of the time. Oh, sorry. It has pulled back 25% of value, I think you mean. I'm not sure because you didn't say, but uh, Andrew, do let me know if Ada has pulled back on every news event 25% of value or 25% of time, meaning that even after news hits, it doesn't pull it doesn't pull back down. But 25% of the time, it does pull back down. Uh, so I'm not getting that coming. Uh, I guess I'm not getting to come properly. I'm not sure if it's pulling back value 20% or 20% of the time. It after the news, it does pull back down. Anyways, what I'm expecting, we could be getting action and downside. Is that going to be bad for the market? Probably not. Um, is it going to affect Bitcoin and Ethereum? Um, it could put a little bit of pressure on Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to do their thing, and then uh, Ada might be able to hold. Particularly if Bitcoin does break to the upside and Ethereum breaks to the upside. Um, it could try to hold, but we might also see the effect of people leaving it a bit, uh, Ada particularly if it drops on value, all right, cool. So we do tend to know that people could leave ADA on the fact, you know, the news are already there, people are already bought, you can call it top for ADA. And Ethereum and Bitcoin might pump a little bit, at least to that 40, 49,000 for Bitcoin. So people might want to take advantage of that and move their ADA over there so they can get those gains. We'll see, right, we'll see. The news will be the Alonso's on it. Uh, you know, that, that's fine, you know, we, might, we don't know what we're gonna see then, right? Anyways, Ada, that's what I'm looking at here in the daily. Let's go to the four hour. Low to high, low to high, low to high. High to low, look low, and then we went higher. So hidden bearish divergence. What does that net us? Actually a downside, maybe sideways motion. We also see that this line is a resistance. Look, we hit and resisted. So we have found a resistance and we also found divergence. So we have the same line, ain't that great? 
So what do we know about this? Potential action and downside, maybe sideways motion. Do a seem that we're getting action and downside. Is this is the pre sell the news, whatever. Or, I mean, that it goes live tomorrow. It could be. Is Am I gonna, uh, you know, say that that's the only thing that's happening? I'm not. All right, again, the market's shaking. Neutral 50.77, still pointing down on the other side. That means we're still looking for action downside, but look at this beauty. We did go down to that $2.51 mark and found support like we were supposed to, like chats, hit that area. We're bouncing, we hit that 20, we're bouncing. Very nice, very nice here, dude, on finding that support. It does seem to be wanting to reject it. It's the second time that we're seeing rejection of lower areas of value with strength. Look at the wick, look at the wick, right? Look at the wick here. All right, so we're, we are rejecting lower areas of value. You think any dips get bought up fast? That's fine. I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna go down. Oh, uh, I do believe it has a bright future. Now, do people sell? Yeah, are they gonna try to sell to scare people off and then they can get in at a better area of value? Probably, right? We're gonna see market manipulation. We do know that we do get to see manip market manipulation here. We do, we, we do get drops to scare weak hands out. They end up selling. And then the guys that started that sell off end up buying at a lower price, coming and snipe all those bargains and then people have to go back up and buy again and they just repeat the history and then people end up buying high and selling low that's how it happens right uh anyways consolidation it looks like triangle right look coming down here going up here right triangle consolidation it'll be a large move if this is the consolidation that we're getting right why am i saying that because the move if, if this line we continue going right we're going from here to here if we do measure that to the upside whenever we break right could be looking for three dollars and 42 cents on the old time high or we could be looking for a drop now we could measure this in all fairness and say okay let's say we break here and we go to the dollar and 61 is that going to be 25 percent of its value from the break it's around 31 percent. so if you're looking to a 20 25 percent value this would suggest this triangle consolidation and the news happening it would suggest that this is happening now it's something something curious that we should point out here y'all remember the wyckoff accumulation i was talking about on on the corn I'm gonna leave that line here. I'm gonna make it blue. Uh, and then I'm gonna draw another line here and make this one, uh, leave that one yellow. And then we're gonna make this one blue and make it mid there. At least we know there's resistance. You remember what I was talking about, the Wyckoff stuff on Bitcoin and, and the divergence, All right? Look at this. So one, two, three, four, right? This one didn't go higher than the previous. It might've gone higher. It did go higher because we have divergence, right? So one and then we have two three four at least in the main ones right and look at this bitcoin chart what do we see here we have this portion of the bitcoin chart one and we have that same spike here right that we had here i'm gonna try to get them here so you can see them uh kind of like together right after here would be here here would be here right so here here uh no sorry uh how does this go so this one is this one right so I'm gonna draw lines here real quick. So this one's this one. Then um, this one here would just be this one, right? And then this move here on that hidden divergence is what we had here, All right? Has a cup and handle on daily. I'll check it, man. I'll check it for a cup and handle on daily. Just give me a second, man. Uh, what I'm seeing here is this, right? So far, we could also argue Oh, Bitcoin has something that looks like a cup and handle on the daily. It doesn't. Lips are off. So I'm going to check for ADA. Um, but look at this, right? So again, Bitcoin had this movie. Here we do know we created divergence because I already checked it. We already talked about it. But this here is looking scarily similar to this here. So it could be that we're getting a Wyckoff, right? A Wyckoff distribution. Just remember, you can you can snapshot this, put one next to the other, and see how that behaves. It looks extremely, extremely similar. Look, even after this spike here, right? Before we went to the top here, we had a potential pseudo rally that drops. Look, potential pseudo rally that drops. There's a lot of similarities here on this move, right? Look on this move. We did try to get that rally and then go higher. We did try to get that rally and then go higher. So a lot of similarities. Uh, am I, is it enough to tell me that this is going to repeat itself and, and we're going to go back down? Not right now. But again, if, the, if it is a sell the news rumor, uh, if it's a sell the news rumor, if it's a sell the news event, and we're looking for a 30% drop, that would be what we're looking at, right? It would be looking scarily enough like Bitcoin. Looks, I'm right here, looks like Bitcoin.
I can type for crap today. During ATH, right? That's what we're looking for right now. Looks like Bitcoin during all time highs. Man, just be careful. It's starting to look like Bitcoin. I hope it's, it doesn't. So you said, uh, blah, blah, blah on the daily. Cup, cup and handle on the daily ADA. Where's your cup, dude? Is this the cup you're looking for? Your lips are not even close. All right, so I'm going to go to another chart here, Nita. Is this the cup? All right, uh, let me go to another one. I do, I, I'm glad I have a lot of Nita charts open, so we're going to go with this one again. It also has fibs. That's fine. We know we're rejecting. So this one's a little bit cleaner, though. Oh, where's, my, where's my curve? Here we go. So if this is the cup you're looking for, look at that. It is not going to the way a cup should look like. It's like Cody. All right. All right, cool, man. I'll go check Cody. No worries, Steve. No worries, man. No need to scream at me. I'm only mortal. I also make mistakes. All right, let's go here. Cody. Cup and handle. Yes, we already talked about this. Cup and handle. Ah, look, how do we know we talked about this? Well, we have the cup. Now we have the handle. Um, is that handle still valid? We are kind of flirting with that 50% retrace line, which still makes it valid. You know, the handle must be above that line, right? We did get a rally that didn't quite break our top line. So I'm just going to adjust here real quick. Now this drop. Um, why am I changing the fibs? Right, this fibs here on Cody. This uh, um, important things about the fibs is that if we get them right, we could be targeting things to the upside. So this one, I'm going to lower it to where it's supposed to go right there. That is a break line. So we do break 47 cents. Yes, we could be looking for some very nice action to upside, even up to 41% recovery from that line. So if we go from here, 41% gets uh, say now around the 69 cent mark. It wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad, right? Anyways, yes, it is in an area that if we drop lower, we're gonna be negating what it means to be within a cup and handle. Uh, again, I would probably have to pinpoint this a little bit better. For some reason, this line moved. So we might still be within the cup and handle. There we go. Yeah, that line was a little bit off. So that's fine. We I pinpointed it here to the tops because that's where we're at using to measure. I might have shifted it by accident once I was looking at the chart. And this line needs to drop a little bit to account for that wick there at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to have to zoom in here. Try to get that wick as best as I can. Uh, I think that's fair enough. That's close enough. Um... Yo, Haas, thank you much for the follow, man. Yeah, I think you followed at the beginning of the stream. That's just freaking weird. Oh, let's move this. I was moving the chart by accident. Um, that's close enough. Look, we are still at the same area, right? Hitting that 50%. Look, we hit. Now, now that I've adjusted, hose again. Jesus, thank you very much for the follow. Um, now that I've adjusted that 50% line, look at that. That green line right there is a 50% line where a zero line is. Guess what? We're hitting it twice. We're hitting it spot on. Not very much. Uh, not very much happening here besides that cup with handle, which could play magically to the upside. Is it bullish? Yeah. But remember, guys, if Bitcoin cracks, if Bitcoin breaks, if Ethereum breaks, will this project be strong enough to do its own thing? Or is it going to follow and crash and burn with the rest? A man says, I, I missed his request earlier. OMG. All right. Yeah, sure, man. I'll put it in the list. Go to the Is it good? Yeah. Do I like it? Yeah. 3 City West. What's up, man? We've talked about this for a while now. We were looking at that cup and handle here. Is it still forming? Yep. It's still there. It's still valid. So good eye, Steve. Yeah. We know we're looking for this. Low, lower, negative, or negative. Lower, lower. Still. Nothing here that is bullish. We did create some bullish divergence here on this last bit. Let me hear auto adjust. I know there's a lot of line in this Cody chart. Bear with me. Um, why is there a lot of stuff here on the Cody chart? Uh, reason for that is... Well, there has to be a lot of stuff like Cody chart. There's a lot of stuff happening. All right. Look at this. There was bullish divergence here. With that, potential function outside. Start to get a recovery. Again, hitting that 236 and rejection, right? We're still good. We're still good. Still, still valid analysis. Yeah, very valid. Um. Hello, hello. I don't give advice, Andrew. Thank you very much for being here, though. 
Yeah, I know. You talked about Cody. You said it has strong fundamentals. I should get into it. I am going to get into it, man. I am going to get into it, right? I am going to put 100 bucks into it. Don't worry about it. I'll put 100 bucks into Cody. By the way, the, the other day, Firebird's transaction did go through, and I didn't do this, but I'll do this for him Audience, right now. say it with me. Legendary, Legendary man. That's awesome. Thank you very you much. You did send me some data. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Andrew, Firebird, Andrew. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I'm going to listen to you this time, Steve. I'm going to put $100 into it. I'm not going to, you know, not listen to you this time. Um. Anyways, Bullshit Ever just came that up. She said, Andrew, thank you very much for being here, man. Thank you very much for the kind comment. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad you took uh, your own decision and uh, decided to go in and uh, that you're doing good with it. All right. I'm happy you guys, you guys are doing good. Right. Neutral at 51.86. Again, this is not an advised channel. We just talk about what potential could happen. You, you end up making the, your own decisions in the end, right? That's why I tell you the upside, the downside, and you end up deciding where you believe the market's gonna go, which is the best thing, right? That's what we, that's, it might validate your point. It might invalidate your point. I might show you something that you hadn't considered that you might now be wondering about. Maybe, maybe that will change your mind. Maybe it doesn't, right? I'm not here to change anyone's mind. I'm not here to tell anyone where the market's gonna go. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a psychic. <laughs> I'm not a psychic. Uh, I'm not a psychic, man. I wish I was a psychic and I would know where the market's gonna go all the time. I do make mistakes. I know I've uh, made plenty of mistakes while trading as well. Uh, it's not about making mistakes and taking hits. It's all about risk management. <laughs> My TI was bang on. Thanks, man. Uh, Steve put 100 for me. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it, it's not about being right or being wrong. It's about risk management. You can be wrong, but if you cut your losses short early, and you let your winnings run, you are going to be making profit in the long term, right? It is all about advice. Um, seems like all the Andrews are bullish on Ada. Yeah, looks like it. There's we have a lot of Andrews. We have at least three that I can count: Andrew Snyder's, Firebird Andrew, and Crypto Balls Andrew. So three Andrews. Go figure. It's an Andrew channel. Uh, we only have one Steve though, and we have two Craig's. <laughs> Ain't that funny? <laughs> Anyways, let's keep rolling here again. That advice. Uh, you ultimately are responsible for the decisions that you end up making. Hopefully you make the right ones. And uh, again, we're just here to talk about what could potentially happen. Manage risk. That's the most important thing I can tell you. Manage risk. That's what it breaks down to. You can make the best trades ever, but if you're not managing risk, you can lose a lot really fast. You can lose a lot faster than you win. So make sure you win. And when you win, you're winning right and winning strong so that if you take a hit and you lose, your at least your wins are offsetting your losses and you're still profitable in the end. So again, manage risk. Don't let your losers ride. Letting your losers ride on the hopes that they're going to recover. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up taking a hit. Why is that? I'll show you the psychology behind So let's say you, you bought here and the market started to go up. All right, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's say you bought here and the market started to go up, right? All of a sudden, it starts to go back down. And here you're thinking, well, it's going to recover. It's going to recover. And then it does recover, but it doesn't go to your entry point, which is where you want to exit because you want to take a hit. And then it drops more. Ah, well, it's going to recover. It's going to recover. And guess what? It goes here again. And then it, yeah, it's going to recover. And all of a sudden, you're in a position where you might need the money. And guess what? You're going to have to be, you're going to be forced to be liquidated or liquidate your position. I mean, when I say liquidate your position, it doesn't mean like, you know, you're going to get liquidated on a loss. It means that you're going to have to cancel your position, right? That's the proper term. You're going to liquidate your position at a loss. And, um, you know, and then the market's going to look like it's going to rally and you're going to be like, oh, screw this. No, you just sold out a wrong area of value because you were, uh, you know, met with some things that you needed to do. And you're just taking a hit. It's normal, uh, right? So that's why you should at least have a stop loss or have a trading plan. You have to know how much of a hit you're willing to take on a trade before you, you exit. Right. That is key, man. A lot of people are saying don't set up stop losses. They're for losers, whatever. Uh, they cut your profits short. Yeah. Sometimes they do cut profits because what you get sometimes off the bat, you enter here, you read the market, right? It goes up a bit, it goes back down, it hits your stop loss, and then it just goes back up. And sometimes you do get cut off here, right? You do get cut off because you, you already lost. You already hit your exit. But that is fine. That is if you're if your exit it was a five percent and you put hundred dollars, you just lost five bucks. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Even if you put a thousand dollars, you just lost fifty bucks. It's not gonna be the end of the world. That's why you can on the next one you might lower your stop loss to six percent or seven percent or eight percent, whatever you want, and you gotta start playing with percentages once you know the market that you're entering. You know what kind of turns it could have. On crypto, I would say anything below 10%, you're probably gonna hit in a day. 
So in crypto, you have to be willing to take a, a bit more of a hit unless you say, okay, I, I don't want to lose more than 5% because it's a high risk asset or at least a high risk crypto. I do want to exit at some point in time at a good area of value. And that's when you set up your stop loss around 5% and you say, I don't care if it goes down and it bounces back above five. Guess what? If it goes out of 5% and, and we do get the stuff that happens on crypto, right? That where you, you go up here. And then on crypto, we did to get this bounces and then this bounces and then it just kind of flatlines and then it goes down a bit like we saw with Bitcoin. If you would have sold here 5%, you could have entered again here or here or here and you would have taken a little bit more profit and you would have had a larger position on Bitcoin than you would have had here. All right, so here you would have bought more Bitcoin uh, than you had previously. Why is that? Because with the same amount of money, right, that you had here, you're going to buy Bitcoin here, which is cheaper. and You're going to get more Bitcoin. I drew a lot of lines now. It looks freaking messy. But, you know, those are the ideas, man. Those are things that you need to get into your head if you're trading uh, to be profitable. If you're huddling, you don't care about any of this. Basically, if you're huddling, all you care about is um, increasing your uh, your position at any dip that's available so that your portfolio is larger over the long term, right? It's like you're acquiring a company, basically. And over time, you want to get a larger, larger piece of that company pie. Anyways, that's it. Let me clear this chart. Let's finish Cody here. I think we did finish Cody, so we're going to have to go and look at... Uh... There we go. No, we didn't finish because we didn't look for divergence. So we have divergence. Um, high to low, low to high. Bearish divergence. Uh, bullish divergence is strong. So action to the upside, that's fine. We do know at least there's a reason for a rally. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good talk today. Man. I enjoy the streams when there's not a lot of requests. Where we can uh, do a, a, a tet a tet right? A hit the head and really level and talk about like sound stuff and, and good practices. Not again, not advice, but good practices that should keep your portfolio flourishing. Um, again, on the move here, we had various divergence. Guess what? Within the same island. But the move I'm looking at right now is this one. It's trying to go higher. Is it going to, is this going to trigger? We don't know yet. Is the second bar of this island? But what I can tell you is that we're starting to develop this various divergence. And it's just against the MACD, not against the RSI. So against the MACD, strong bearish potential fraction downside. Be careful. All right. Be careful. Again, I cannot, I do not know if it's going to pump or drop tomorrow on the news, right? Or on whatever going live speculation. Again, it's highly speculative and, and it, it's, it's not based on technicals. When it's not based on technicals, we cannot measure, right? We, at least we cannot measure as accurately as a measure move or a percentage gains. It's news. We don't know how the market is going to take it. And we don't know if people are going to offload it. Uh, so, again, entirely up to you how you handle the portfolio on those news. Let's go to. Uh, well, we check Cody. Let's go to OMG. I love tonight's stream. Tonight's stream has been fun. I don't think I've had such a fun stream in a long time where I can just talk about stuff that is not technical analysis and like really talk about all this stuff that is not technical. That are like, you know, good stuff that you guys should know. At least if you don't know, you should hear. I think the ADA dip will be strong unless Bitcoin leads. Yeah. We're on Todd Ethereum drop after last four but it did yeah all right so wait is are we gonna get a hard fork on ada so are we gonna get a hard fork on ada So that means you're gonna have double your ADA, right? You have ADA on one on, on the main ADA and then ADA on the new wallet, I guess. So you're gonna have double your ADA basically. <sighs> Tomorrow at 445, the epoch change. Epoch. Oh, I should buy ADA. Hard for combinator event. What do you mean combinator event? Uh, it doesn't work in, like, ah, it's I'm not going to buy ADA then. I'm still going to be reluctant to buy ADA because it doesn't work like that. I remember when Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash split. I had a little bit of Bitcoin. All of a sudden, I had more Bitcoin. That was fun. Anyways, let's go here on Amisa Go. Amisa Go starting to develop bearish divergence. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's go on the daily. ADA works differently. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. No worries, man. It's all good. Look at this bearish divergence, ha, huh? actually the downside. It's 
strong bearish divergence, right? Again, within the same line. All right, could we pump more? Yeah. Could we get up to this level and then reject? We could. I'm not sure if we're going to have the divergence against the MACD if we get to this uh, 236, though. We might hit, or is it 236? Yeah, 236. We could hit that 236 and reject. It would not be uh, something that would be unheard of. We are probably going to still keep divergence against the RSI, even if we come up here. So we might negate the divergence in the MACD, but still keep it on the RSI. Right, smart contracts going live, Ada's being that. All right. Gonna have put coin on Ada's. Nice. Have orders just about $2. All right. Anyways, low to high. I'm gonna have to zoom in here. I love, all right. I hate, I hate when the MACD is so tight that I have to zoom in. I mean, it's good practice to always zoom in when in doubt, right? But um, it's just, I wish it was cleaner uh, or at least clearer. Right, right here. So we are bought at 61 point. So the one hour chart. Look, so we have strong bearish divergence. Again, Omisego, it would be one that I would be careful with. Why would I be careful with it? Again, not to be overly bearish or not to be like, you know, setting, you know, wild warnings here. But the reason about what I would be a little bit bearish and I would just be cautious, right? Not super bearish, just cautious is we don't have anything bullish, right? We are getting absolute consolidation. If we are to draw this like this, Guess what that is? It's a rising wedge. Where do the rising wedges tend to go? Rising wedges tend to break down. Not only do they tend to break down, we have bearish divergence on the four hour. We have bearish divergence on the one hour, right? At least here in the short term. And we have bearish divergence on the daily. So would that lead us to action and downside? It could. And based on that, I'll just say be careful, right? Again, no advice, not telling you what to do. I'll just say be careful. Set up a stop loss if you're worried. Where could we go? Well, primary target on the daily is going to be at 382, around $8.39. Right now, $9.39. So we're talking about a dollar drop. Then if we do go lower, $7.39. So we could drop up to $2 before we actually drop to that 50% retrace and try to hold there. So same same look, right? It looks as though we're getting a rising wedge. We, could we bounce at the rising wedge? Yeah, we could right? bounce here and keep on consolidating to the upside. But again, just be careful right now. At least from what I'm seeing, we should be at least looking for some action downside. If we draw that line here again, I like the way it looks here. Why, why do I like the way it looks here? Um, let me agree there. So midpoint, midpoint. It's a little bit off midpoint there. Midpoint. And here, we came very close to it in bounce. So again, it is a rising wedge. Be careful. Potential for a break to the downside of the go. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this one to blue. Again, not saying get out. Not saying stay. Uh, all I'm saying is just be careful. Right, our chart. That's it. So this one I brought over by accident. It should have stayed. This one should have stayed on the uh, four hours. So we're gonna send that one back there. And what I'm gonna look at here right now, what I'll be looking for is okay. So we're gonna check this out. We did create some bullish divergence for that rally, right? So again, we're gonna go back a little bit into the history of what this move is. So before I do that and, and take an advantage that I have this on blue already, I'm just gonna draw this line here, keep it in the one hour. And I'm gonna draw the line here as well. All right, so if we look at the lines, and where we're at right now look at that it looks as though we're trying to break that to the upside but we haven't yet confirmed how do we know that well we have a hit here a hit here and now it looks like we rejected a couple times now we have a hit there so that's fine so is that good I, mean, I would say right now it's still a rising wedge so why did we rally now let's go behind and look at the history so we have this move here what does the move tell it tells us that there was strong bullish divergence how do we know we are getting that counter uh on the um macd right and on the other side we're going higher so on both moves we're going from low points to high points right and with that i should tell said by the way guys if you haven't done it yet make sure you hit the like you hit the bell you hit the sub we're building one of the most awesome crypto readings out there but we cannot do without your help and support that's why it's very important you help us like retweet share our videos you know whatever it is that you like if you want to make small snips of the video and post them on twitter whatever it does help bring engagement it does help bring views it does help get exposure for the channel if you guys do those things you're gonna help us grow a lot and i'll be forever grateful to you so uh what else what else are we gonna do here um if you are half positions open type one right positions meaning you have buy orders not necessarily longs you can also have longs you can have whatever so type one if you have positions closed or closing positions or you're exiting 
uh, the market type two. I do want to know where you guys are standing. Anyone shorting ADA is in more. All right, yeah. They are going to panic sell. Hmm. I'm oh, sorry, they're not going to panic sell. <sighs> Rob, then we are uh, right. Right, it could crash uh, for people cashing out, people that got in early, and then, uh, you know, people are going to try to buy that dip. It, it could happen, right? I'm not saying it's not going to. Look, Bitcoin up a little bit more, 0.34%, right? So we did get a nice green candle. Heading for that 20, we haven't quite gotten there. I'm, I'm liking this small bounce. I'm not saying it's super strong. I'm liking that small bounce. That means Ethereum is probably higher. Ethereum at 1.71, also trying to go higher. Look at Ethereum still going green, still going for that 3,327. I'm really hoping Ethereum gets above that line and breaks that area. Sorry if I'm seeing super bullish. I'm really excited to see Ethereum trying to do something and try to break higher. We already tried earlier. We failed. Do I like that? No, man. I was at breakfast today with uh, with some cousins and I was looking at, at the market because I was like, oh, cool. Right? Is, is it going to hold? Is it going to hold a line? Is it going to try to get above? But look at that. So much flirting with this line until we weren't able to hold it and pump from it. So we reject it, right? So we're rejecting. We're going to try to overtake it again. Hopefully we can hit that line in rejection. Would not be the strongest sign. We could be looking for a movement down to happen. How strong for moving down? I would believe that on this rejection, it would be not the first second but third rejection we could really be looking for a dip to happen and i'm not gonna be happy with that theorem if that happens now uh, is that gonna be uh what's gonna be happening here hopefully not hopefully we do get above that line we do start to get that retrace we do get bitcoin to go to forty nine thousand, uh and then we see if we're making that same wyckoff distribution that we have seen or that we've talking about that we believe could develop again it is not for sure because it's not there we're looking at the possibilities of something building just like I said, early pattern detection usually tends to help, right, determine where uh, where the pattern is going to build, whether or not that's going to happen. Now, if we do get good at early pattern detection, someone might not develop, right? Because it's early pattern detection. It's not once you, the pattern has developed and it's taken off. There's no point in getting in. You're, you can talk about the past, but that's why early pattern detection is key. That's why we try to look for what could potentially happen based on what we're seeing, right? Anyways, I'm up so much in Ethereum ADA trade. You sold Ethereum for ADA. All right, you may able to say 15 Ethereum so far. Oh, that's pretty good, man. That is pretty good. Steve, I'm happy for you, man. I'll give you a round of applause for that. There you go, Steve. Congrats, my friend. Congrats on being properly trained. I am really, really happy for you. I like it when you guys bring your success stories here. I also wish you guys brought your horror stories. Because then that really lets us know uh, what can happen, right? Chester says, TSI, Ethereum is fundamental, but they can't even stake on chain yet. Lean effect will fade as Ethereum tech lags. It could. I mean, it is. We're talking about the dinosaurs, right? On crypto, we're talking about the dinosaurs. When we talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum, we're talking about like first and second cryptos created, third cryptos created. So they are old, old. And what's going to happen is new tech is going to try to take over. Look at that Ethereum right on target. 3,324, slightly above 3,325. Um, so is it going to be that way forever? No, at some point in time, that tech is going to lag. It's going to be so old that new tech is going to do it better, faster, and cheaper. And when that happens, yes, that crypto might have some, you know, nostalgia value. It'll probably be worth something there on, you know, um, it might hold there on, you know, nostalgia. It might have, you know, a store of value added to it instead of, you know, smart contracts like Bitcoin found store value instead of being a transactionary coin. So, you know, yes, it might still survive, but I do believe, yes, at some point in time, other cryptos are going to try to take over and they're going to be doing things a lot better. We do know Ethereum has scalability issues. We do know the market is too expensive because of, of the uh, gas fees. All that is trying to be taken care of by patching up the code with the new developments and yes at that point in time that code's gonna be sold that you know it's like with programming dude. you used to program it with like cards right and then you had COBOL and then you had you know oh, what are the programming languages I forgot man I forgot a lot of them already but you know you had so many programming languages that have been coming out and every time a programming language jumps out it gets better and better and better, right? It does what the other program would take you a lot longer to do. It makes it faster and better. It makes it faster and better, runs smoother, 
that's what we get, right? Computers, graphics, everything. Everything that is old stagnates, right? It might have value for a museum. It might have value for nostalgia. It might have value to play some old games, right? Now, if you try to play some DOS games right now on your computer, you're probably not gonna be able to run them very smoothly. You, you might be able to run them on, on a DOS emulator or whatever, but you might wanna just get an old computer and run DOS, right? Like Nintendo. If you wanna have the real Nintendo experience, you have to have an old Nintendo. So for that to happen, it, that means it is a collector's item. Will that happen to crypto? It could, right? There's some coins that are gonna become collector's items more than having an actual value. Will that collector's item that we could call it store value because it has a perceived value? Would that happen? It could. Anyways. You see it with Bitcoin and Ethereum? It's fine. I mean, again, it's just, you know, it's just ideas, man. It doesn't have to be what happens. I'm just, you know, dropping some ideas of as to what could go happening. I think Ethereum being the first of Mars contracts, it could be good. I mean, whether or not you're going to be able to bring those, I think if you are able to bring those contracts into Ethereum smoothly, sorry, not Ethereum, ADA, uh, the Ethereum contracts smoothly, and uh, they run properly without any, any, any friction or anything like that, and you could start to see ADA overtake Ethereum to some extent. But I think Ethereum, for the short to midterm, is still going to have a very strong and solid community that are going to be trying to keep it alive and keep it afloat. Is that going to be what end up, ends up happening and, and, and going on? I don't know yet, right? Again, it's just, I'm talking about possibilities of what could go on. So let's get this rolling. Sorry, guys, I'm like, one of my feet hadn't hurting for some time. Like, I busted my ankles a couple times. So um, had to wear boots and crutches and, you know, Past. So, so for some reason when the weather changes they do tend to hurt a bit so I, I cannot be standing up for a long period of time it requires a more beefy PC than is required to play crisis anyways um Anyways, guys, we drop bombs, we drop knowledge. You guys drop knowledge. We had fun. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun. If you did, hit one. If you didn't have fun, hit two. I do want to know when you guys are not on the stream. I have 19 people watching, 27 likes. We did awesome for it tonight. Um, prepare for war, man. I know you're in Vegas. I hope you're still watching the stream sometime, or at least a recap. And if you do watch it all, thank you very much for watching. If you do skip through it, I hope you get to this part. Thank you very much for the awesome messages that you send us from Vegas. I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate all that support. Helping bring awareness to the channel. It's key, man. Bro, what you did is freaking amazing. For reals, thank you very much. I do wish you the best of luck there on Vegas, my friend. I want to be signing off, guys, right? So um, I, I, have, I don't have any thoughts on Moon River, man. I haven't seen it. So I cannot tell you, uh, Chester Davin. I haven't even done research on it. So, you know, what I would tell you is like, uh, no clue, man. Right? Anyways, guys, a man by yourself, that entire life to you, man. I cannot tell you what to do with your money. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, you know what to do. Hit the like, hit the bell, hit the sub. Join us on the Discord. Links have been pinned at the top of the chat. If you're on, if you are on uh, Twitch, they are going to go out right now. Make sure you join us on the Discord. Um, stick with it, says. What are my thoughts on Ethereum? Is it going to pump again? I'm not sure, dude. I'm not sure if it's going to pump again. It could go for a small rally. It is pumping right now. Uh, it does need to get above 3,324. Otherwise, I would be looking for a potential moving down file. Tell some Bitcoin. Dude, Carl. Carl Mons. I did like 40 minutes into Bitcoin. Or I spent 40 minutes on Bitcoin. And then I would say about 40 minutes on the rest of crypto that we looked at. So I would say if you really want to see what I think about Bitcoin, I would say go check it out. Because there's a lot of things happening on Bitcoin. And uh, I think you're going to find some of those ideas very good. I'm not going to be able to resume them very, very quickly right now. But I do appreciate you being here. And I thank you very much for it. I would suggest you at least watch the first couple minutes. Uh, there are some things happening there. There are some similarities to what's happened in the past. We've talked about them in detail. And they'll be very, very... I think, I think you're going to get a lot more from that than if I just quickly resume that. Anyways, uh, Shushita West, thank you very much for being here, man. Uh, guys, uh, who else, who's uh, here tonight because they saw a sign in Vegas today? Um, here tonight because I saw Sunny in Vegas today. I'm not sure how many people are here because they saw Sunny in Vegas, but that's a pretty good question. Andrew says one, so he's having fun. He may say seven, so I'm not sure what that means. Um, it's a nut number, so I'll interpret that as a one. 
Uh, yeah, that Sunny Vegas is pretty cool. I'll show it again. Uh, oh, your buddy, uh, Prepare for War, was bringing this sign up in Vegas, right? It's pretty cool looking, man. It's pretty, pretty cool looking. Uh, I, I like the sign. It's pretty good. And I love the support, guys, for real. Thank you very much for watching again. If you like what we do, you know what to do. Hit the like, hit the bell, hit the sub. Talk about crypto to your friends, to your family, to your coworkers. Let them know that we are here. This is an awesome channel to learn. It's an awesome channel to be part of. We do have a great community. Uh, remember, remember, all the information that we are providing here is not, it's just for entertainment and education purpose only. Please don't trade based on what you see here. We're discussing ideas. It's not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. We always have to say all those things. Uh, Madison, thank you for being here, man. Carl, Andrew, 3 City West, uh, Chester Diamond, uh, Steve, Aman, uh, Jake. I'm trying to see who else stopped by. Um, Jay Kennedy, uh, Andrew Schneider, Stelly Hendrick. Uh, dude, who else? Who else stopped by? I think I'm missing someone. I'm missing someone. Tony, Tony Yee, um, Elon of Lurking, uh, do, 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 Cal Crop Doc. Uh, Jake, who else, who else? Did I miss someone else? I think I got through everyone. I think I went through everyone. If I miss you, out, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for joining. If you didn't talk, I said, Drew Durant, thank you very much for joining me, man. Uh, guys, that's it for tonight. I'll catch you again tomorrow for another edition of The State of Crypto. Next week, one of the days there's not going to be a stream. I'm not sure if it's going to be um, Wednesday or Thursday. It is Mexican Independence Day. So I'm going to be off for one of those two days. I'm going to have uh, some friends over for dinner. So I'm gonna be entertaining people. I'm not gonna be here either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm letting you know right now. I will let you know for sure which date as the week progresses. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll catch you, like I said, tomorrow for another edition of the Set of Crypto. Until then.